The Cretaceous was a geological epoch that lasted around 145 million years and ended about 66 million years ago. It is the Mesozoic era's third and last phase, as well as the longest. It occurred after the Jurassic period and before the Paleogene period. It is the whole Phanerozoic's longest geological epoch. It lasted for up to 79 million years. J.B.J. Omalius D. Halloy introduced the term Cretaceous in 1822, and it is derived from Creta, Latin for chalk. Chalk is a soft, fine-grained limestone made mostly of the armor-like plates of cocolithophores, microscopic floating algae that thrived during the late Cretaceous period. The majority of Cretaceous rocks are not chalks, but the majority of chalks were formed during the Cretaceous period because they have not been distorted or eroded and are relatively near to the surface, many of these rocks reveal, clear, and easily accessible information of the time. The Cretaceous period began with Earth's land divided into two continents, Laurasia in the north and Gondwana in the south, with Laurasia in the north, and Gondwana in the south. When the Cretaceous period ended, vast stretches of ocean, such as the North and South Atlantic Oceans, separated most of today's continents. India was adrift in the Indian Ocean by the conclusion of the era, whereas Australia was still tied to Antarctica. Because of exceptionally active volcanoes and enormous rates of seafloor spreading, the climate was generally warmer and more humid than it is now. The polar areas lacked continental ice sheets, and their land was covered with forest instead. Even with its lengthy winter darkness, dinosaurs inhabited Antarctica. During much of the Cretaceous, the sea level was greater than at any previous point in Earth history, and this was a key factor shaping the paleogeography of the time. World oceans were generally 100 to 200 meters higher in the early Cretaceous, and 200 to 250 meters higher in the late Cretaceous than they are now. The Cretaceous globe was divided into three separate regions, the Northern Boreal, Southern Boreal, and Tethian. The presence of fossilized reforming rudest bivalves, corals, larger foraminiferans, that are single-celled organisms, known for their glass-like shells, and certain ammonites which are a group of extinct cephalopods, known for their spiral shells, distinguishes the Tethian region, from the two boreal regions. North and South America split enough early in the Cretaceous, for the Tethysi Pacific Marine Link to strengthen significantly. According to faunal patterns, the Tethys to Pacific Marine Link allowed for a strong westward flowing current. Now, let's understand life on Earth during that period. The Cretaceous period is biologically noteworthy because it marks the transition from the Paleozoic era's early life forms, to the current Cenozoic era's advanced diversity. During the Cretaceous, for example, most, if not all, blooming plants, known as angiosperms, made their initial appearance. Although dinosaurs were the dominating species of the time, many contemporary animals, such as placental mammals, first appeared during the Cretaceous, before the major extinction that marked the end of the era, other taxa, such as clowns and snails, snakes and lizards, and most fishes, gained uniquely modern traits. The period also had rich marine life. The Tethian and Boreal paleobiogeographic areas may be found in the marine realm. This classification is based on the presence of organic reef-like formations dominated by rudists. Rudists were enormous bivalves with one valve fashioned like a cylindrical vase and the other looking like a flattened cap. As far as framework builders go, the rudists had the upper hand over the corals. Outside of the Tethian area, they were uncommon, and the few kinds found elsewhere did not form reef-like structures. In Mexico, Venezuela, and the Middle East, rudist reef-like formations from the Cretaceous period function as petroleum reservoir rocks. The long-necked plesiosaurs and the more fish-like ichthyosaurs were marine reptiles. Sharks and rays, also known as chondrichthians, as well as teleost, which are ray-finned fishes, were all marine predators. Xyphactinus, a Cretaceous fish that reached to about 4.5 meters, is the world's biggest known teleost. Many creatures that were essential parts of the Mesozoic world went extinct relatively close to the end of the Cretaceous period. 
dinosaurs perished on land, yet plant life was unaffected. Only approximately a third of the Coccolithophore and planktonic foraminiferan taxa survived the demise of the planktonic marine flora and fauna. Many explanations have been offered to explain the great extinction of the late Cretaceous. The asteroid theory proposed by American physicists Walter and Luis Alvarez has received a lot of attention since the early 1980s. According to this idea, an asteroid colliding with Earth sparked the extinction catastrophe by ejecting a massive amount of rock debris into the atmosphere, engulfing Earth in darkness for months or longer. Photosynthesis ended as a result of the lack of sunlight able to penetrate the worldwide dust cloud, resulting in the death of green vegetation and the disruption of the food chain. This notion is backed up by a lot of data in the rock record. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to Explified, so we can bring you new content. Check out our channel we make videos on space, travel and more. See you in the next one.